Hello and hardware. Okay, some highlights from this week's newsletter. Um, if you're into Python, every year there's the official Python developer survey. Please, please, please consider filling it out. Um, it helps them figure out what things to Python Foundation and the folks that are driving all the interesting things in Python do. Well, JPoint, they have the like, most popular editor yeah. for Python. So um, these are, you know, if you're using Python daily and there's like stuff you want Python to focus on, this is your chance to yeah, learn. Yeah, including things that are helpful for, um, you know, circuit Python, because uh, it's all part of a core. There's Python. Yes. And then there is MicroPython and there's circuit Python. It is all a big family. So if there's something in Python, we'll probably have it in circuit Python at some point. Um, you can check out um, the rest of the projects. This week, we're going to do a couple things. We're going to um, talk about something from Playground. And we're also going to play a video. Um, this is the Making Music with CircuitPython and Raspberry Pi. We try to highlight some of the things from the community. This is a really well put together, so we're going to play the well put together video. So we're going to play this. It's from Pensacola Maker Fair. You can see. Um, it's cool. Like Todd, you, uh, JP. Yeah. Uh, if you're looking to do insane. anything with music, um, you can check out this really neat um, Pico Sandbox uh, demo and more. So do check out all the projects. Um, you can see all the things that people are doing with Python on hardware. Yeah. Pretty much anything that you can imagine, um, it's here. Um, One thing I thought was of... interesting at the, at the beginning, you know, I forgot that it was in the newsletter, is, you know, GitHub had their, this big announcement about how they're like, or their next generation of, of GitHub is going to be all co-pilot controlled. And I thought that was interesting because, um, a lot of people do use, co you know, Copilot, particularly when they're using CircuitPython, because one of the benefits of the way Adafruit works is we've been publishing thousands of guides and projects and tutorials and examples. And so you not only is your documentation, but there's so many examples that chances are if you yeah. want to build something with CircuitPython, Copilot will, will be able to do a pretty good job because it already knows all of the styles that we have yeah. for Python. You can there. even interact with some of these AI systems, you know, ChatGPT being when you could be like, I want to write a library in the style of Adafruit. And it used our code and it will um, because we allowed it. And uh, well, I don't think it, Genie. Yeah, it's trained on it. Yeah, yeah it's, <laughs> it's too late now. Um, and so you'd be able to um, write libraries with uh, an Adafruit style as well. So do check that out. Um, but let's go over to Playground because you wanted to talk about this is using Android with CircuitPython. Yeah, uh, Liz just published this. Um, this is thanks to a PR. Can you click on the PR merge in CircuitPython? Because I want to get the person's name correct. We did it was ADCC. Um, it did an excellent um, job. They're fixing up a bunch of our mass storage, not bugs, but just like stuff that can be improved. And one of the things that they um, updated was the like a couple bytes in like the fat format MBR now lets Android um, mount the file system. And so you can have like an Android phone or tablet plug in your circuit playground board, the mass storage shows up as a disk drive, and then you can open up. There's a bunch of free editors um, that Liz talks about that you can use to open a file, edit it, and save it. She gives a couple of hints. There's there's one way that works great and one way that does not work very well. But once you've got it working, you can also use um, the REPL to connect to the serial port as well. So you can basically have a portable, no computer required cool. programming system. And like, you know, um, it's funny, a lot of the things that I, the decisions that we made with CircuitPython come directly from me having the frustrating experience of having to debug pick microcontrollers at Burning Man. And it was just un unbelievably infuriating, infuriating to like, oh, I didn't, you know, I don't have the right driver. I don't have the right um, IDE. I don't have the library. I don't have internet access. So being able to edit and tweak code on the fly using any computer or now any mobile phone, uh, I'm getting close to making me 10 years ago happy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. 15 years ago. So check that out. Um, and the way to get to that is if you just go to learn.adafruit.com and click Playground, you'll be able to see this and so much more. Um, Playground is a place where anybody can publish guides. Um, our team uses it, community uses it, lots of great guides and more, probably some familiar faces from the community. Um, but this is where we put uh, ones that Going are... Going in. Yeah. Write something, write something up if you want, if you're working on a project. And then when you're done, 
uh, click that you want to show and tell the project and we'll feature it on the front page. Okay. Um, and then getting back to what I was talking about before. Yeah, sorry. This is a great, no, it's okay. That's right. This is a really good video um, that uh, was sent to us. So we're going to play this. Synth. Get out, synth. Snakes. Hello, everyone. I'd like to present to you today a little project I've been working on called the Pico Synth Sandbox. Name pending. After playing around with the new audio synthesis library, Synth.io for CircuitPython, which came out earlier this year, I became very aware of both the power and limitations of this awesome new tool. In order to add nearly all the functionality that you need and make the process of programming your own musical device extremely simple, I decided to create a new piece of hardware using the Raspberry Pi Pico and team it up with a fully featured new CircuitPython library to get you off the ground running. The Pico Synth Sandbox comes with nearly everything you need to make a variety of synthesizer projects. First and foremost, we have the star of the show, the Raspberry Pi Pico, which holds 256 kilobytes of RAM and one whopping megabyte of onboard flash memory to store your code. Next, a 12 key capacitive touch keyboard with full polyphony, but sadly no velocity or aftertouch. Then you have the choice between I2S or PWM audio output, depending on your preference and budget. One of my favorite features is a teeny tiny PDM omnidirectional microphone for you to record your own samples. And up front and center, we have a 16 by two character LCD display with a rotary encoder to handle any menu diving you might need for your project. An absolute must have for any musical device is hardware MIDI input and output. In this case, we're using 3.5 millimeter jacks to send these digital signals. To hear your sound creations, we have a volume knob with both 3.5 millimeter line level and onboard speaker output. Last but not least, we also have a LiPo battery to power it all. In its current form, not every feature can be used simultaneously and has to be pre-configured beforehand. This device is still in its revision one infancy and there's much to improve in future board revisions. Many examples are available that show off how easy it is to get started with this device and the included hardware abstraction library. Here are a few of my favorites. A bass heavy monophonic synthesizer. A complex filtered polyphonic synthesizer. An analog style drum machine with a 16 step sequencer. And a fun sampler using recorded audio from the included microphone. If you're interested in trying out this fun project for yourself, the PCB Gerber files and bill of materials are available on the GitHub page down below in the video description, as well as a quick getting started guide to get your Pico set up with CircuitPython and the Sandbox library. There are plenty of examples and library documentation on the Read the Docs site included below as well. And if you happen to be in the Pensacola, Florida area this upcoming weekend, November 11th, I'll be set up at the 2023 Pensacola Maker Fair to let visitors get hands-on with this device and learn about CircuitPython and digital audio synthesis as a whole. Thank you all for letting me share what I've been working on lately. I hope you have a wonderful day. Okay, so for all of your Python hardware needs, you can sign up on Native Daily, deliver it each week. Spam free, we hate spam even more than you do. It's a completely separate website. There's nothing to do with your shopping account because we want to make sure that you knew that we just don't send you newsletters. So adafruitdaily.com setup is for Python on hardware. 